Hello team, welcome back to another Line War cast. Our two players today are John Bolton in red and DT Assassin in blue. This is your map. We have a little trade route on the left side of the map. Four gases over the left side, which might be important because besides these three gases, this is the next concentration of gases on the map, which can be very important in the game of Line War. We will see. Bolton spawning on the left side of the map here dt assassins in the corner in blue so immediately this this start would in general probably favor bolton over time there's more land to cap on the left hand side of the map as the than there is on the right hand side of the map but i love this and this is this is why dt assassin has paid the big bucks eight barracks to start which i didn't even realize was possible one two three four that's why it's possible there's only DT Assassin only started with four of the territories that you're allowed to get. And so this is why there's this many factory or barracks that can be created, which I actually kind of like because DT Assassin is far enough away from John Bolton that these eight barracks are going to be able to come online and start building more units. And I'd assume they will make as many units as DT Assassin gave up by only going for a handful of territories. I hope that made sense. Bolton's going for three factory tanks, a fourth factory, and a barracks on the way. Tanks are really good here for Bolton, especially because these two and likely four gases, which Bolton's going to make a run for it, going to bolt for it, should I, I should say, to the, the bottom to get these other two gases. You can turn the video off now if that was too much. And with, with four gases, you can run tanks for a long time. They're very gas-heavy. But if gas isn't a problem, Bolton's taking the first one now. You can run these things for so long, and they're they're pretty good capping units, even if you can't get damage done. Income wise, two seventy two for Bolton, who's in the negative, two sixty for DT Assassin, who's also running in the negative right now. And it will be it'll be interesting to see how far to the center part of the map that DT Assassin can get before spotting John Bolton. And the bottom part of the map, DT Assassin will probably be able to get no problem. There's, It's going to be very difficult for Bolton to contest this bottom right side of the map. And, unless, like, tanks are rushed immediately here. If we look at the player's vision, neither one can see each other yet. I like that DT Assassin has all the lines spread out like this. It's very good coverage. And Bolton, rush into this gas. I wonder why Bolton is sprinting to this gas. I wonder if it's to secure it, to get even a, like a quick third gas. Because this is very committed from Bolton on four factory tank, which can be very strong. And if tanks get on top of production or get in good isolated fights with infantry, tanks do very well. So this is the play. Bolton's going to take this gas in the center part of the map. And really, this is a very good defensive location with the mountains and the forests. Whoever controls this, that's a very good position to be in. And if Bolton can control it, it's even worse for DC Assassin because DC Assassin is a little bit boxed in on the right-hand side of the map. So Blue is going to have to make an effort to break like this position on the map over time. Commandos now from Bolton to supplement the tanks. Tanks and commandos work very well together because tanks don't have good vision and commandos do. I've never played this game with music on and I'm just trying for this this cast and that's what the, the ominous music is. We, kn we know it's about to pop off. Both players can see each other now. Eight tanks for Bolton are making their way into this forest. And potentially, I mean, Bolton knows where DT Assassin is at this point. And by how much infantry there is, which is a lot as discussed because of this eight barracks opener, which is still just going for infantry, no commandos. 
and I guess ch changing the player's vision stops the music. All right. Still more tanks from Bolton, who only has one gas. The second gas for sure needs to be made very quickly with this many tanks moving around. And ultimately, this, this could become a positioning fight. Like if DT Assassin can position well, body block the tanks, not allow the tanks to get on top of the, the production, it could be a very good start for DT Assassin because there's going to be an overwhelming number of infantry that can push to the south with all the tanks in the north. Income-wise, 404 for Bolton, 452 for DT Assassin. Bolton's doing a great job to stay in the forest. Infantry have a bonus in the forest, rifleman bonus, we can see in the tooltip. So by the blue infantry being in the open field and the red infantry being in the forest, red will be trading better here. Tanks are moving through the forest to cap, and they are as slow as you would imagine. And numbers-wise, red is going to lose this fight, and it's going to be a lot of tanks against a decent amount of infantry that's being reinforced rather quickly. DT Assassin's already made their way to the bottom right. And there we go. The, the black smoke is that red is out of gas on the tanks. So not only can the tanks not move, but whenever they show that black smoke trail, they'll take increased damage for five seconds after that. Still waiting for the second gas from Bolton, which will happen as soon as there's enough money really and this would be very good for bolton if there's enough gas to like behind this if there are two gases these tanks could for sure take out all this infantry here comes the commandos to try to help those tanks out the tanks aren't moving which is kind of good for them because they won't be consuming gas but they obviously can't all be in the fight And this is a lot of infantry from blue. There's eight tanks or so in reserve for red, which is plenty to deal with all this infantry. It just depends on if there's enough gas for these tanks. That's really the big thing. I like this play from Bolton not wanting to get too risky with these tanks, just a defensive line to stop blue from, from going through this choke. It's a lot of infantry, though. And numbers have a, uh, their own quant quality, right? So however many infantry this is versus seven tanks, the infantry could do all right. You can see what Bolton's thinking. Or I guess we're on DT Assassin view. My part of me, 560 income for DT Assassin and 512 for Bolton, who's about to be able to take that second gas. The fight on the left is very likely going to go Bolton's way because these tanks aren't going to run out of gas anytime soon. The fight on the top right, however, there is enough infantry to be able to push the tanks back. And there's that second gas, which I assume is over here. I am wrong. It's got to be... Okay, so it's gas 2 and 3 for Bolton, who is still just going for tanks, and it could be a very good play. Tanks only is a legit strat. This is a very high MMR, like both these players. The one barracks full of commandos is actually very clutch. These commandos can get very, very sticky and slippery and evade detection and do a great job to scout. The DT Assassin's got one factor on the way now and that's the only other tech to speak of for either player. Tanks through mountains are so slow they move even slower through ta uh, through mountains. And it's, it's still a lot of gas that's being used. That click click sound, beep beep I guess rather is a more fitting Whatever the word is for a word that sounds like a sound, holy cow. But Bolton just really needs to figure out this gas thing and then it'll be fine. DT Assassin's going for a round of commandos here, which I like. I want to see what Assassin can do with these. 
and follows up with a second factory, which is definitely definitely the play because it's going to be hard to take on four factories producing tanks that are are about to get their second and third gases, so they'll actually be able to keep driving. It's it's just a lot of damage on the ground, so having some sort of factory backup is a good safety net. Although it's make so it is artillery right now. Which makes sense, because DT Assassin doesn't have an easy gas. This is the first gas for DT Assassin, so there's no way DT Assassin can go for for tanks. It has to be SAMs or artillery. Obviously, SAMs don't really make sense here if Red's gone for all tanks. There's no way, there's no way that an air for, or airport could be afforded. We can see how bad tanks visions are vision is, right? Because none of these commandos are being seen. And this eight barracks worth of infantry is really going for DT Assassin. Bolton's at 680 income, DT Assassin's at 644. This is where tanks get kind of wild, and in some sense they function like commandos in that a lone tank that just gets around things and gets on production can do a lot of damage. The top side of the map here, DT Assassin is going to be able to take this all back. And this is a huge win for blue. And the blue's definitely going to defend this tank. Only one tank. It's not going to be able to take out production that quickly. And there's the reaction time. Very quick from blue. A barracks in the back. Two barracks in the back for Bolton, which I really like. This is one of the main strengths, like we talked about, that Bolton actually has the better potential economic... You know, picture because of all the land to the left side of the map that can be capped. Capping land is super OP when it comes down to economy. 656 income for Assassin, 728 for Bolton. <laughs> and Bolton, off of three gases, could have a fourth soon, but is really struggling to make these tanks work. And the question is is it too many tanks? This many tanks against this army of blue, in a straight up fight, the tanks will definitely win. Unless they were out of gas, which is exactly what's happening here. So blue will likely take this fight over time. I like that the tanks are capping, but unfortunately by the back tanks moving, these tanks are getting in a lot of trouble. So the defensive line is a good call because Bolton doesn't want these tanks to move all that much because of the gas situation. If they move, then they run out of gas and they have that black plume, then they take more damage. But this isn't really what tanks want to do. There's some tanks that aren't firing, of course. This is very tough. Blue's not going to be able to get on top of the production quite yet with this number of infantry when there's th that many tanks at home. This is a great trade for Blue, though. DT Assassin's doing a great job to clean up those tanks. Still doesn't have a gas. And it's now three factory, all making imp er, artillery, part of me. And this is what's happening. This is just the big push to the south of this mountain range. Very cool map in the geography. Tanks running across the front line is not going to go well. I assume these things are trying to get to the south, and they are. They for sure are, which is a good move, because this is a lot of open space and presumably a lot of economy for blue. Here comes that fourth gas we were talking about. Off of four gases, red's probably going to be able to deal with this. If enough tanks group up and they all fight at once and the gas no longer becomes an issue, then red off of a worse economy at this point. Assassin's 100 economy ahead, which is actually pretty large. So these tanks need to start doing stuff. 
and it's really unfortunate the music stops every time I switch player perspective to see the incomes. So if the tanks run in one at a time, this this would be bad. So this is a great play from Red to back up and group up. I would say it's like a rather one-dimensional strat from, from Red, which is clear, but Blue is also playing a pretty barebone strat. Artillery, infantry, and some commandos. Three artillery pieces clean up a commando that was trying to kill a factory. Good play from both players. Bolton's floating a bunch of cash at 776 income. And Assassin's going for the port in the top right. Which will help to cement that economy lead. Bolton still has a very good army. Okay, well this blue infantry is doing a great job to go all the way to the mountains to go for a proxy base for blue. And that could come into play later. Could be very important. It's a good push from blue right now. It's very controlled. The front is intact. The nine tanks, and the, or the eight tanks, part of me, in the top are going to run into a bunch of infantry in the forest. And I think best case scenario for red right now is that these eight tanks in the north actually break out. Okay, everyone needs backup. Here comes the tanks. Trying to flank this army. It's a, a wonderful amount of units, and the variety of units for Assassin is huge here. The artillery is constantly firing on the tanks. The infantry is doing a great job to body block. And there's enough reinforcements that these tanks are likely not going to be able to get out of here. Interesting to see where the tanks in the bottom are, and they aren't here anymore. So they were obviously cleaned up by commandos and infantry. Blue's still rocking that eight barracks, three factory look. And Bolton hasn't added any more factories to speak. There's a lot of tanks in the back capping. Which is good. We talked about how tanks are efficient capping units. If blue pushes well here, the game could be over. Or there could be game ending damage. Bolton's definitely figured out that gas problem now. There's 120 in the bank. Four more factories going down. And I think it's likely because Bolton knows that this is kind of sketchy. Tanks are good. But this is a lot of units from blue. The tanks are going to be able to move though, so let's see what happens. The tanks in the top are free, so they're going to be able to cap in the north and make a play. These tanks must... yeah, so they're moving through just retreat command. A blue move command, so they will run by anything, and they'll try to get to the end of these lines. They'll only shoot at things that are in their direct way, which is actually a great way to clear a lane. But it's a lot of units from blue. And the question is, has, has these tanks, have they done enough to blunt the force of this push and at least buy time? And if these tanks sprint to production, I think the answer is probably no. And Bolton probably knows it. That this is going to get very sketchy. If these four factories finish up, it's no longer a problem. But Red definitely needs to buy time for this production to come online. DT Assassin at over 1k now. And building a town in the bottom. Still no port to speak of, but this this push is looking very deadly. The four factories for red are now done, and we aren't surprised. They're making tanks, so there's eight tanks at a time, which is actually huge, because there's no air transition from blue. If eight factories worth of tanks can get online, and Bolton has enough gas to to run these tanks... Could be quite the army, it just depends if Blue's going to allow that to happen.
This is a great garrison of units at, at the top for blue to deal with these tanks. It's going to still be a little bit of an emergency because that many tanks is going to be able to take on that army. But you got to like this if you're DT Assassin right now. This is this feels like a very good position to be in. Bolton's almost capped the whole left side of the map. That the land units can actually get to. With this much infantry, one of the strong things that's going on for blue is that the artillery is not dying. Because all the units are, like, the infantry is in front of the artillery, not here. In the other side we were seeing, here it's it's functioning more like red would want, which is the tanks are on top of the artillery a little bit. But once the infantry gets in front of the artillery and the artillery can just shoot and not have to worry about getting hits, it's a lot of power. And here comes the push into the mountains. There is a possibility that... Maybe not in this situation, but blue could overextend and, and lose a lot going into the mountains. Bolton's trying to flank with two groups of tanks to cut off the reinforcements, which is a really smart idea. Because there's going to be better numbers for red to get tanks in this choke and cut off all these units. But, the, but unfortunately, I mean, there's so many units that the base is going to be destroyed by not defending with these tanks and so here here's the here's the play and if two more rounds of tanks were able to get out this would probably be held by red but as it stands this is a great artillery line from DT assassin who in kind is is making twice as many barracks as they originally had. First factory goes down. DT Assassin at over 1,000. Both players' economy are actually similar at this point. Oh, here comes the music. Love it. This is so much damage that Red takes here. And I assume at least one more factory is going to go down. Bolton's the first one to go for an airport. I really like this. I like the location. I like the fact that there's two of them. I mean, the range that these planes can go for Bolton. There's actually three airports, part of me. A third one over here. Air support here would be huge. I mean, tanks are a great, you know, la ground and pound army. But without the air support, when when a big group of units like this happens and the tanks are kind of not grouped up, it's very d difficult to, to clear this sort of army when the artillery is already set up. So now with... 38,000 barracks and three factories. It's, Blue's going to get a ton of units here. Bolton unfortunately couldn't get down to this bottom right, so that all, all that eco is going to go uncontested. Bolton at 1160 income. And DT Assassin's at 1060, so Bolton is definitely taking the lead on income, but I think it's partly because... Assassin's gun for so many barracks that the upkeep from that is huge, but the resulting army from that will also be very, very large. Because in about a minute or two, there's going to be so many infantry and commandos here, it'll be very difficult to even have the number of tanks or airplanes to deal with that. Tanks moving through mountains look hilarious, but I mean, I guess it makes sense. They are tanks. Love this barracks from Bolton, the little mountains there. Mountains have a little bit of a stealth bonus, so there is a chance that blue will just run by that. Yeah, and here come these tanks that are kind of finally coming online. I mean, two factories live through this. 
So, I mean, Bolton could still... I don't know, actually, if Bolton can come back from this. This will be very difficult. This is a lot of units that are showing up. For blue. The air pates, uh, air, air pates, airports are finally made. Going for transport jets and strikers. I like the transport jets because they can commando drop this island. And also this island. And that's more economy for red. If Bolton can hang on, keep these two factories alive, certainly keep these four factories alive at the very minimum, then red could make a comeback here. But this is a good mixture of units. For blue. DT Assassin has worked in some Sams. This is great. To be ready for an air transition from the opponent. Which is exactly what Bolton's done. It's, it's perfect timing really from blue. And that'll be unfortunate for Bolton to see when the Sams show up. The commanders are just running through the mountains. Have sniped one factory. A great clump of combined arms in the bottom here for blue. And yeah, this is just overwhelming. There is going to be too much. DT Assassin definitely sees this. Can't see the commandos that are skirting around the outside until now. That, it just depends how many units are around them to be able to spot invisible units like commandos. Yeah, this commando drop is perfect. I mean, there's a lot of territory that Bolton can grab on the far left side of the map. DT Assassin at just shy of a 1200. Bolton's pretty much at the same economy. And here come the first planes that we hear. Which I just suspect would be launched very quickly. But even then, there's just so many units. Blue has so much. You really, I think you'd really need like three airports full of strikers here. Like 15 full strikers. Bolton's making more factories dropping back, which is definitely a play. You never want to give up. But if this push allows DT Assassin to get to this position, it just continues to go downhill. It's just economically, blue will pull away from red because all this territory is going to be taken back. And that's territory that red loses, so the income is lost and blue also gains income. It just makes the lead that much bigger. Samson Artillery for Assassin still. Fourth Airport for Bolden, which is actually pretty smart. I mean, if Blue kept with no Sams, you could really catch your opponent off guard by just showing up with two airports full of, or like however many airports full of strikers. This artillery line is, is just crushing right now. No more buildings from blue. Still no gas from blue. Assassin only needs artillery, Sam's infantry and commandos. And it's working. Income is 1064 for Bolton. Uh, 1274 for, for DT Assassin. And it's mostly infantry that are coming out of these barracks. But it's just a mass of units. So these two factories are definitely going to go down. I assume at that point it's... Blue is just going to continue to push. 
It just depends whether blue decides to kill this or the gas to the north. And DC says and can't really see this. The replay makes it look like maybe they can because the, the tree's just dipping out of existence for a split second. But either way, this is a slow push. Bolton being on these these two islands is great, but it's a little bit too little too late. Commander's trying to take on 10 infantry, about four times as many infantry or whatever. Than the number of commandos that were here. There's so many, there's enough planes. I mean, it's almost, it's like nine strikers for Bolton, but there's enough Sams that sending strikers right at this would hurt a lot. These two factories are very close to the front lines and they're building tanks. Which I like. I mean, there's definitely something to just making tanks out of factories. Against this much infantry, may, like, artillery could have... Could be nice. But I think you could really do it just with tanks. Either way, very interesting to watch. Maybe next time I play, I'll just make tanks only. This many strikers, let's see what they can do. Circle command right here. This is sort of last ditch effort and, and red will need a, a huge, huge win. By default, the strikers are going to attack the artillery first. Well, they'll attack the SAMs first if they're in range of the SAMs, but otherwise they're going to try to attack the artillery. Which is probably good for red, that's probably what you want here. A lot of planes but it's not enough this is what could get Bolton back in the game it's so much infantry though blue would be able to just send some stuff up I mean this is great vision if blue immediately saw this if assassin just yeah look at that props it's good reaction time anyway very good game both players props Thank you to Bolton for posting this in the match replays section of the Discord. And props to Bolton for posting games that may or may not be wins. Because it keeps me on my toes. Because I don't actually know who's going to win. It's very entertaining. Check out the Limeware Discord again like we just talked about. If you want to learn more about the game, check out Twitch. I stream it on there. Soda Quackers, same handle. Other folks do too. 2v2, 3v3, maybe more free for all on the way to line war likely in november very exciting times enjoy thank you for watching peace